Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, sponsored by Arnold Clark. I'm Peter Martin. It is Wednesday. Thank you very much for joining us on the show. And in the studio, Alan Ruff, Tom McManus and Barry Ferguson are here and AGM is still high on the agenda. Rangers AGM yesterday. We'll talk more about that and some of the fallout from uh, Dave King's speech. Uh, but today it was all about Celtic and covering that for us, our reporter Gabriel Antoniazzi. So I've just been inside at the Celtic AGM. It lasted around two hours and it was mainly Chief Executive Peter Lowell and Chairman Ian Banker explaining the past year for the Scottish Champions. Now, uh, Peter Lowell started by uh, praising Brendan Rodgers for raising the bar at the club, said that Neil Lennon is the right man for the job and that he is a great manager in his own right. Many of the fans and the shareholders that spoke as well wanted to thank the board and Lennon for stepping in at the time when Rodgers left in February last year and leading the club to the treble treble. Now, Lowell insisted that they aren't a selling club despite moving Kieran Tierney on to Arsenal. And, and when asked uh, how they can improve in Europe, perhaps the Ajax model, Lowell said that Ajax sacrificed four years of domestic titles to then progress their young team. And he asked the crowd, is that what you would want? Rangers to win the league for four years in a row. We have to have short-term goals as well. Uh, Ian Banker said that it was an £11.3 million profit for last year, which uh, is impressive as well, considering they didn't make the Champions League group stage. Now, Peter Law did speak about the Green Brigade as expected, although it wasn't in as many words. He said there are a small minority of fans that do threaten the safety and the reputation of the club. The most concerning thing is that they don't think they're doing anything wrong. He said it also gives uh, the club's enemies an opportunity to level their club with others that they shouldn't be that they are different but mainly the focus was on keeping up the dominance of Scottish football and there were also touching tributes to Billy McNeil and Stevie Chalmers who passed away earlier in the year but from everyone here at Celtic it's all eyes on tomorrow's clash with Wren in the Europa League. OK, we'll hear from Neil Lennon in a moment, but Ruffy, there was no long-term plan here. It's short-termism at the moment. It's quite simply keep going in the league. Yeah, there, there, there's no panic at all. You know, I think Celtic uh, within themselves believe that they have enough in reserve to see off the challenge for Rangers, uh, which which will be there for a while. But, uh, no, everything's going well financially. You know, they, they were fortunate enough that... Uh, they identified the, the worth of bringing young talent in and selling them on for large sums of money, and that's why they're in a financially good state just now. Yeah, 11.3 million profit. Now, you look at the 25 million for Kieran Tierney <clears> and the 40 million they have in the bank, uh, you're talking about a, a club with somewhere between 65 and 70 million clear profit in the bank, uh, Tom. It's a strong, strong position. Yeah, they are. I think Celtic are in a great financial position uh, in terms of spending money if they have to. In January, you know, I think Celtic have obviously got a squad just now who maybe only need one or two to come in and strengthen the starting eleven. But they've got money there and they've got power behind the scenes to go and strengthen. Obviously, a lot more than Rangers have got at the minute. So that, that I think that's a big advantage for Celtic. You can understand why some fans will look at Ajax, uh, Barry, and say, "Well, you know, Celtic should be doing that. Celtic should be getting to latter stages of the Champions League if you can follow their uh, blueprint." But I think sometimes people don't actually look at the fine details of Ajax. Although they sacrificed not winning the title over three or four years, they spent a bit of money mm. on young players and experienced players in there as well. You know, there was a bit of money spent. It wasn't just, you know, all young superstars coming through. They, they, they actually supplemented that with players that cost a fair penny. Yeah, we spoke about that a few months back, that they do spend money, they go out and pay uh, good fees, but I don't think, um, going back to the sacrificed league titles, I don't think the Celtic fans would be would accept that. They want to be winning the domestic title every single year. 
And they need to be at it now because, as uh, we've spoken about previously, um, their nearest challengers, Rangers, are getting stronger each year. But in terms of Celtic and the financial side, they're, they're, they're in a real, real strong position. Um, and they'll be they'll be getting stronger by the looks of it. Yeah, and the one key issue here, which again <clears throat> is something that I think you know a lot of people might look at it and put it in the back burner as a as a you know a, a topic that was mentioned by uh, Peter Lawwell, but quite simply. He's not on that European board for nothing, Ruffy. He absolutely knows the way this whole thing is panning out in Europe. Strategy from bigger clubs. He wants to be involved in it. He's hinting that there's going to be a major change around about 2024 in European football. And, and Celtic want to be at the forefront of that. And if Rangers are strong as well, the, the, the two of them will want to be... I think, and I'm, I'm no disrespect, but <clears throat> out with the Scottish structure, I think, and into this some kind of Super League. Yeah, and he, with him being on the board, he'll know the criteria t to match to get in it. You know, there, there will be things that you've got to come up with. I don't think Rangers and Celtic have got a problem with stadium or fan base. Uh, that's not a problem at all. I think what they've got to try and achieve is to get better results in European football. If they were starting to get into the last day, it's the last four, even Europa Cups. You know, people have got to sit up and take notice that they are going in the right direction. Yeah, uh, the one little footnote that I think some fans were disgruntled about was uh, the chief executive's 600% uh, pay rise in bonuses. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, when you look at it, Tom, the, the club's got almost 60 odd million in the bank. <laughs> <laughs> and they're selling players willy nilly. I mean, Ban uh, Ian Bankier and Neil Lennon says he's worth his weight in gold. You know, he's he's worth the money and the bonuses. Actually, yeah, you only have to <laughs> you only have to look at the finances. You know, he's he's a divisive character at times. You know, I mean, yeah. I, I I spent many a year as a as a journalist just uh, fighting with him. I mean, you just you know, uh, you, one minute you're in, one minute you're out, because if they don't like your opinion, you're, you're so far out, you're in Siberia. But at the end of the day, when you look at the way that club is run, <clears throat> most of them, bankers, accountants, people who absolutely know financial structure and prudence. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it speaks for itself. You know, the money they're earning year on, year out. Uh, <laughs> the club's very well run. Uh, a lot of the Celtic supporters are obviously wanting more money spent in the team. That's the major issue with all this money that they're earning every year. They're not putting it back into the squad. But you see the bank balance in a very, very strong position. And they're in a position to spend if they need to. I don't think they need to spend big money just now. You know, they're ahead of, they're ahead of Rangers. They have been for a number of years. If it comes down to it, if Rangers maybe move ahead in January, I think there's, there's, there's money there to go and to go and blow Rangers away if they need to do it. Yeah. Um, now, the, the other key <coughs> point here, which is something that I think they have made a mistake on, Barry, is quite simply the Green Brigade. I, I think the Green Brigade think they're alone to themselves. Uh, they're well aware of what the rules are. This is, I think, now 19 fines that have been handed out to Celtic. Close on half a million pounds has been wasted <coughs> because they just will not do as they're told. It's pyrotechnics, it's political banners, it's chants that nobody wants to hear. Well, he's been clear on it, Peter Lawwell. Um, he shut down a section, I think, uh, tomorrow night. Um, and 19 fines, I know half a million in Celtic terms ain't a lot of money to them. But at some stage, it's going to end up maybe half stadium closures or full stadium closures. Now, I've been in that situation. I played with Rangers against Dan at Milan when there was a, a full closure. And it's it's horrible atmosphere to play in. And that's the last thing that uh, Peter Lawwell and especially Neil Lennon and the players will want. Yeah, I'll tell you what half a million is if you want to try and put a PR spin on this one. Half a million's going buying a good Scottish prospect that you could sell on for five million. Yeah, and that's the way they'll be looking at it. I mean, Peter Lawwell's not daft. You know, that AGM was coming up, obviously. UEFA are coming down hard and, and everybody and if there is, as you touched on it earlier, going to be some kind of breakaway, you know, you don't want that hanging over you, you know, that that's the kind of crowd that you're going to attract to that elite league whenever it is. Yeah, and uh, Neil Lennon was quick to talk about the Green Brigade and uh, mentioned that this is the right decision. I'm here to talk about Europa League match. The club have made the decision and we feel it's the right decision. It's a short term, hopefully, issue and we want the fans back in, but they have to understand that there are rules and regulations that the club have to adhere to. Yeah, well, there was a ridiculous...
press release or release coming from the Green Brigade, uh, you know, keen to talk and explain, uh, is there a safe way to use pyrotechnics? The answer is no, just go there with your scarf, support your team, don't bring any political banners, don't bring any banners that will shame the club, sing songs that are about the football club and that's it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, it's, it's not, there's no place for it. You know, in, in terms of, you know, the, the money that it's costing Celtic, uh, it's not just costing, it's costing reputation as well. You know, and the, the, the banners, the political banners that they're putting out, not acceptable. I just said to you, yeah. go, and, go and support your team, go and sing your songs, you know, and, and, and support the team and get behind the team. There's no need for it. I don't think there's any need for it. And they're not listening. And that's the thing, Celtic, you know, it's not <coughs> just the Green Brigade think they're alone and onto themselves. And uh, there's no place for it. And I think it's, it's the correct decision for tomorrow. Yeah. To shut a bit of it down. If they want to uh, make political statements, then they can organise a rally in Glasgow City, apply for a. Yeah. Apply, if you feel strongly about things, uh, you know, apply for a permit and walk down the middle of George Square. Don't use Celtic Football Club as a platform, Ruffy. That's my take on it. Well, that's the point. That's the point that uh, I would say 99% of the Celtic supporters are trying to get through to them. You know, we're here. We enjoy what you're doing. We enjoy the singing. We enjoy what you bring to these these big, big nights, but don't bring the club down. Yeah, absolutely. OK, uh, Celtic are playing Wren, and of course the manager, Neil mm. Lennon, was talking ahead of that match tomorrow night. Looks as if Olivier and Cham will play. Uh, they're at the top of the group at the moment, but he's looking for more points. Well, I think that's uh, the main motivation, and I think the motivation to try and get a 100% record in the home games in the group is also an added incentive. Well, if they can get that win over Wren, it suddenly means that the, the last one, there's not as much of an edge to it because they want to make sure they're seeded going into draws. Yeah, they want to finish first in the group, and that's why I think he'll play a real strong team tomorrow. He'll not even think about the game on Sunday against Ross County. He'll go full strength, whoever's 100% fit will play, so... I think Celtic will go out full force and I think they'll win the game. OK, we're going to talk about uh, Rangers coming up shortly. Just before we get to it, uh, what do you think, prediction, Wren? Uh, I, think Cel I think Celtic will be too strong for them. Uh, I thought they were good away from home. 2-1 to Celtic. Yeah, I'll go 2-0 Celtic. OK, Baz? Yeah, one for Celtic. OK, uh, now, uh, quite a lot of people have been emailing, sending us letters as well, phoning us and just saying, uh, if there is an Oscar, it's it's up there with Dustin Hoffman now. It's as simple <laughs> as that. It's, it's Barry in the competition. <laughs> Hi, I'm Barry Ferguson. Don't forget to like, share and follow our social media channels at PLZ Soccer. To win this shirt, all you have to do is guess my favourite Rangers goal. That was absolutely magnificent there, Barry. Absolutely it superb. First goal. <laughs> first goal. Let them know. That was that was first no, it was no, it was. It was first, first goal. goal. He actually had to cut the boots. He said, Ruffy, we keep that card still. <laughs> no, <laughs> listen, no, no. Hey, no. Listen, to Ruffy, who takes how many takes? Oh, listen, oh, hey, don't, 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 be oh, take, don't, don't be taking any lessons no, from your man here. That massive pla placard with big writing on it. <laughs> listen, oh, no, he did it in one goal. take. I kid you not. He did it in one take. When's Tam's show? Oh, Tam's is fantastic. I can't wait. Times. Hi, you can win all 30 clubs I've left on a free transfer. Um, so, <laughs> Tom, we are going to get a, a, a prize for yourself as well. I, I'll need to come up with one. We'll need to do a competition for Tom uh, coming up shortly. OK, um, what about the AGM? There's still the fallout from it, all the questions that you're going to ask. Um, about Alfredo Morelos. Uh, Rangers fans were, were uh, wondering if he was going to be sold. There was a possibility uh, with Rangers looking for £10 million before the end of the season uh, £11.3 million losses um, here's what uh, Dave King had to say on the possible sale of Alfredo Morelos uh, I would say that I can't imagine a circumstance where we will sell Alfredo I've said to the manager if you get over £25 million for him £30 million, I wouldn't sell him you make your decision I don't want money in the bank we're here to win league titles I made the point we are not like a mid-tier Premier League club who can trade players, make good money, but um, we are not under any pressure to win uh, the league, but are not under any pressure to win the league. The most important thing for us this year is to have the best shot at winning the league. I would rather keep Alfredo. If um, they were offered 40 million and the manager came to me, I'd be, I'd be saying my instinct would be to keep him. Uh, usually I can read that quite normally, but uh, it was all over the place there, but you get the gist of it, which is quite simply, uh, they're not going to sell him, even if they get a huge bid, and I think that's music to Rangers fans' ears. 
Yeah, they'll be delighted with that. As I says, I says it for day one when the, the rumours started flying about that a big offer might come in for him in January. Um, there's no way Rangers could sell him. I think it may happen in the summer, but during the season he's far too an important player. Um, he's in top form, so I'm well. I'm guessing. I'm, I'm saying I'm guessing. I know the Rangers fans will be delighted with that. There's that suggestion <clears throat> that uh, it could be a, a Julian Volhart, it could be someone else uh, who's got money from uh, Hong Kong, or it could be other major investors, or people just taking up the share issue that's about to be launched. But Rangers will need money, Barry. Um, now, uh, not only do they need money, but they need to try and continue to back the manager's ambition yep. as well. How many players do you think they need to have a good chance of winning the title? Um, I, I think they're strong middle to front. Um, I'll be honest with you, I think still in defence, may need one or two players, i.e. fullbacks. Um, there's no, there's John Flanagan who's really who can play right or left back, but he's more of a squad player. So I, I would look to, well, I would think Stephen Gerrard be looking at that kind of area. As I said, I think the midfield's really strong. I think the wide areas, he's got enough competition for places. And he's got two top strikers up top for me. Goalkeeper situation's fine as well. So that's the kind of areas I think that he may look at. And as far as uh, Dave King, what's your take on him stepping down and his overall period in charge? If I'm a Rangers fan, I, I, I think he's done a, a fine job. Um, he came in at a difficult period. He steadied the ship. Um, I tend to look, as a fan, what's products on the pitch. He's made probably one mistake, and that was Pedro Coutinho, where he's had to pay him off and pay his staff off. But I think he made the best decision 18 months ago by bringing Steven Gerrard in. Um, and the product on the pitch at this moment in time is very good. Um, well, of course, there's some areas that can improve. But for me, Rangers are going in the right direction. So I think overall, he's done a great job, and I think... The vast majority of Rangers fans will be delighted what he's done. OK, um, you can give us your <clears> thoughts on all the topics we were discussing. Uh, a nice little touch from uh, Stuart Milne, the outgoing Aberdeen chairman, just saying, you know, all of this, uh, <clears> the <throat> best decision that he looks back over his 20 years plus in charge, the best decision he made was getting Derek McInnes in. Yeah, we know how close he was to Derek. Uh, he believes in everything he does. He knows the challenge there is there for Aberdeen with Rangers and Celtic. And I think Derek's acquitted himself particularly well with the resources that he's got. I'm sure he would like to have done a wee bit better in Europe. But on the whole, uh, I think Aberdeen fans will be really happy what he's done for them. It's hard to believe he was also part of that Dave King story because he could have been the Rangers manager at a time. Yeah, he could have been. He obviously knocked it back and I don't. you'll have to ask him if he's got any regrets about that. Um, but I think Rangers have went and got... gambled, I think, a little bit on Steven Gerrard, yep. to, be, yep. to be honest, but I think it's a gamble that's paying off. I think he's turned, he's, he's turned into a top-class manager. He's obviously got to try and win something at Rangers. I think that'll crown it all off, but I think he's done a fine job at Rangers so far. Uh, Gerard. Yeah, Hearts are still looking for a manager, but the uh, incoming Hibs manager has hit the ground running. Two wins out of two. Yeah, he certainly has. He was very honest last night about going back to St Mirren. You know, it, uh, a lot of people that he got on well with there, and uh, he just, as we expected, you know, handled the game very, very well in the win, and uh, it just shows you the character of the guy. Are they in danger of slipping further behind and, and, and just getting dragged down? There's about four clubs on 11 points, but Hearts need to get somebody soon, Tam. I think they do. I think uh, I think the result on Saturday at uh, Command is Kai Bosch, uh, Austin McPhee's uh, opportunities of getting that job. I think that Anne Budge maybe would have liked to have given him the job. I think she's given him every opportunity uh, to get the job. Obviously, a great result in his first game, 5-2. I think the result on Saturday kills any chances he's got. And I think now's the time before Hibs, uh, Hearts get dragged in even, even further into the relegation battle that they get somebody in. And Stendhal seems to be the man that they're going to go for. Yep. Um, OK, uh, the way to win a game, if you're going two goals behind, is make sure your ball boys are alert. Same and the man. Tottenham ball boy was certainly alert. And the fight back from Mourinho, um, it was, I mean, absolutely incredible, wasn't it, Barry? It was. i seen that, that clip of the ball boy and it was great to see the, the manager go over and, and uh, give him a wee cuddle. Um, but listen, he's, he's made a, a, an impact straight away. Good win at the weekend against West Ham. They've come back. I think they were 2-1 two, two, down. They've come back and won against Olympiacos. So he started off really well.
Yeah, let's have a look at the results from last night. Of course, uh, at Manchester City more than uh, through with uh, great comfort. 1-1, uh, uh, nevertheless, in their match against Shakhtar Donetsk. Uh, and there are some cracking games. I certainly enjoyed watching Real Madrid against PSG as well. Uh, Gareth Bale, still lukewarm response from the Madrid fans. They would have been cheering his name had his effort not hit the post and actually gone into the net to win it in the dying seconds of the match. But nevertheless, um, it ended up 2-2 there Mbappe shining again uh, and as far as tonight's concerned Ruffy I look at uh, tonight's fixtures and I'm thinking to myself if you're watching a game if it's me I'm going to be watching Liverpool against Napoli which one would you choose? Yeah I'd probably go for Barcelona uh, Borussia Dortmund uh, yeah. I think that would be a, a, a really good game I think these kind of teams like Borussia have got to start looking to take something for these big sides if they're going to go anywhere A wee bit of revenge in there for Chelsea Tom? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, obviously, Valencia, I think if Chelsea don't, don't lose that game, I think they'll, they'll qualify. But uh, Red Bull Salzburg, I'll be watching them. They're a, a really good side to watch. They score a lot of goals, concede a lot of goals, so I'll be tuning into their game. Yeah, uh, perhaps uh, a blessing in disguise that none of us hang about with Tam under any circumstances <laughs> whatsoever. We'll be watching our games and we won't be texting him at all. Uh, don't forget, over the next coming weeks, especially for Christmas coming up on social media, look out for our big Tam McManus competition, um, which is, of course, <laughs> his, <laughs> his satellite box because he's just watching rubbish on it, <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you. Um, you can join us on Twitter, Facebook, Facebook Live Monday to Friday, and, of course, YouTube as well. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Uh, we've uh, got lots of great ideas for Christmas presents, T-shirts, prints and canvas. Why not get a look at our Legends series in our PLZ Soccer shop as well? We'd love you to do that. And if you're looking for bargains, as ever, we're never too far away from arnoldclark.com where you can get a great deal on new and used cars. You can check that out uh, on our commercials right after the show. So, from Ruffy, from Tom McManus and from Barry Ferguson and myself, Peter Martin. Thanks for watching. Hello and welcome to the latest from Arnold Clark, where we bring you the best deals from across the country from Europe's largest independent car retailer. Here are just three of the unmissable deals that we've picked out for you this week. First up is this 69 plate Vauxhall Corsa. One of the UK's most popular super minis has had a facelift and this 1.4 litre three-door Griffin model takes things a step further with its stylish sports interior, heated front sports seats, finely tuned sports suspension and 16-inch black twin-spoke alloy wheels. It also comes with the Navi 4.0 IntelliLink 7-inch touchscreen and you can get all that for £10,998 or just £169 a month. But be quick, there's only a limited stock available. If you're looking for incredible value for money in the SUV crossover market, then it's hard to look past the hugely popular Dacia Duster. This 19-plate, 1.3-litre prestige model could be yours for $16,498 or £249 per month. For that, you get a whole host of features new to the Duster, including climate control, curtain airbags, blind spot warning, keyless entry, 17-inch diamond-cut alloy wheels and a 7-inch touchscreen multimedia system with satellite navigation, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Add in remarkably cheap running costs and the overall Dacia package is hard to beat. Finally, here's your chance to own one of the most thrill-seeking rides around and for an unbeatable price. This five-door 19-plate BMW 1 Series 118i M Sport gives you all the handling expertise you'd expect from a BMW coupled with style and refinement and all for $17,998 or £269 per month. And this shadow edition also comes with black Dakota leather seats, LED headlights with automatic beam control, 18-inch double-spoke alloy wheels and the outstanding Harman Kardon sound system. For more details on any of the fantastic deals available from Arnold Clark, simply head over to arnoldclark.com slash deals or get in touch with your nearest Arnold Clark branch. I'll be back next time with more mouth-watering deals, but until then, thanks for watching and happy motoring. Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com.